is um, what is one important lesson um, that you have taken away from these past incidents of incarceration and how have you brought those lessons forward with you? Kay first. Um, past lessons of incarceration. Um, I think it's like, hmm. well, the more, okay. I, you know, I, as I mentioned before, I had this crazy arc of just being overwhelmed by the amount of um, kind of oppression uh, or how, just realizing how constantly uh, violent humanity has been, you know, society has been, you know, cause I went to part of the movie, I went to Japan, um, you know, kind of looked into World War II. My mother's from o Okinawa um, and, you know, and kind of the World War II battle of Okinawa and, and the firebombing of Japan and, and just kind of, you know, you think like, oh, they're incarcerated, you know, these families were incarcerated in America, but awful things were happening in Asia, you know, um, at the same, at basically exactly the same time. And I was really confused as how to process those kinds of things. And I think I realized, you know, as I mentioned before, that it's a lot of these things are, um, it's history and it's really, you can't let it overwhelm you. You just have to, you still have to live your best life you know, and, um, but then take these lessons of, you know, reminding people constantly, like, look, this has already, this has happened before. We have, we are constantly incarcerating people. We are constantly um, criminalizing, demon, demonizing marginalized communities in our mind. And I think, you know, I think this is, you know, just, and especially with like the Black Lives Matter movement really coming to the forefront this last summer, you know, it's like just re reminding, you know, joining that voice and being like, hey, hey, everybody, this is, you know, this is really happening. This has been happening. This is really happening. Um, and, you know, and, and, and even with immigration detention and, and these kind of things, just, remi you know, just reminding people um, through music, uh, you know, that's, that's the one vessel that we have is that, you know, our soapbox is like a very soft, gentle song soapbox that people can, you know, can uh, listen to as opposed to just lecturing people, you know, so I, I guess. Yeah. David, what about you? What is one important lesson that you've learned uh, from these past incidents? Well, I mean, I, in particular, I remember going to a, a few different uh, prison facilities with a wonderful singer from Guatemala named Gabby Moreno. And um, we visited a few, uh, two or three in one day in particular. And, and the one lesson I think I learned was um, how the quality of listening when you are incarcerated um, I've played for is so many different types of people, but I'll never forget the the overall the people when they would listen and they weren't always sitting down, you know, cross leg, you know, they were standing um, and dancing, and some were moved to stand and dance. And I feel like I've never seen uh, people of you know, and it was all colors, men and women, and it was really, really fascinating to be, to, to, I've, I've, I've never felt so, um, like the power of music was so powerful. They were really free for that moment. And, and that, that really stuck with me. Oh yeah. And I, I kind of, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I was just so scatterbrained about <laughs> previously, but I think one thing is similar to you, David, um, when I was going around playing for, for people, I realized that um, I was, I've been kind of selfish, you know, I've been like, Oh, it has to be the perfect performance setting, you know. It has to be sound good. You know, you gotta listen. You know, it's like, and then no, it's you just play a little violin, you sing a song, and it means the world to somebody who doesn't have that, who doesn't have regular access to that. You know, and so I decided, I think with you know this kind of re just going around, I, I realized to be less selfish with my music and just you know just play a tune here and there, and it mm. means a lot, so much to people. You know, mm, that's a great. Other segue to our final question. I'm really sad about saying that, but our final question tonight, um, what is something that you want people to feel and take away when they listen to your music and experience one of your performances like this one, David? Well, I would, I would hope specifically from this, this talk, I mean, I just love the idea of three strangers um, over an hour just bonding over things that that the world really needs to pay attention to and you know immigration incarceration it's so crazy those two things they sound like they sound like a law firm you know or, or they sound like who knows what but they really are t are tackleable we can we can tackle both of these things and um i feel that 
again, like I was, you know, saying earlier about hearing these beautiful songs is it's his, you, when, when you hear a voice just take flight, it's that power of the subconscious and the, the prisons and walls and borders, they are the, the physical manifestations of the worst of conscious thought and conscious um, mindsets. So let's just be free and let, let's, let's break those walls and, and, and focus on rehabilitation, not punishment. And, and let's just open these rivers and open these borders. And um, this is a huge country and a huge world and there's room for everybody. Mm, thank you, David. Kay, um, what are some things or one central thing that you like people to take away? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, kind of jumping off of, you know, what David was saying, you know, just really approach, uh, I would say approach this with love. You know, it's about connecting with people, convincing people to act. Um, if you're a musician or you're an artist, you know, you can, you can tell, you can connect so easy, so much easier, you know, uh, if you share your art or your music or your poetry, and then, you know, you're sharing a, per you're, when you're trying to convince somebody um, that this is wrong or that this needs to change, you know, you can really connect with them. Uh, if you come from a point of a place of, of love, then it's, it's really so much easier. And I hope that like people will do this, you know, and, and realize that there is a serious problem with, with uh, our government, you know, um, really oppressing marginalized communities and has been, but then, you know, you can't, um, you know, it's, you have to, you have to be um, a good convincer. You know, I was like, I, I was listening to a radio show about like, um, like t teenage activists and these teenage activists was like, yeah, I could talk about social justice all day, all day long at, at school, but um, I wouldn't have any friends. You know, <laughs> and I realized I was like, Wow, she's got a real point. You know, you have to be like, you have to be fun, and you have to be a great person. You have to be that. You have to be an inspiration to people, a positive inspiration to people. If you want people to listen to what you have to say, you know. So, mm, everyone, remember to be that light, be that thing that we all need. David and Kay, it has been such a pleasure this evening. Thank you both <laughs> so much. <laughs> Thank you, David. Do you have any projects or releases or anything that you would like to share with us? Oh, uh, nothing to share. I'm just busy with a lot of, of, of really cool stuff. I just produced a, a record that's coming out by a band called Midland. We recorded at Sonic Ranch. And I, I, this last year we did, I co-produced the Fiona Apple Fetch the Bolt Cutters album. And that's up for some Grammys and fun stuff. So um, we're hopefully going to be hitting the road one of these days with that. And, <laughs> and then I'm also doing a lot of soundtrack work for some films and producing a lot of music around, but like the world is kind of strange now. So no, no gigs on the horizon. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. Excited to dive into those projects when they come out later on. Yeah. Kay, any, any projects, anything to speak of? Uh, yeah, I have an EP coming out in, uh, in a couple of months. Yeah. I'm also doing no tours. Um, I have a, I'm uh, composing music for this, this kid's show on Apple Plus called Stillwater, which is really great. It's like teaches kind of Zen, Zen concepts. Um, uh, what else is going on? I'm still working on a documentary. Yeah, no tours. But I don't know. I just heard that, I heard that Zoom stock just went down today. So I think people are getting sick of Zoom and they see a little light <laughs> on the horizon. So um, I don't own any Zoom stock. So. <laughs> But thank you so We're much, looking everybody. to the light of the horizon. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you again to David Garza and Kishi Bashi.